Hello everyone, I am Brianna and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a homeschool video. I am going to be setting up my homeschool planner for May as well as planning out the coming week. <music> This is the Erin Condren Homeschool Planner. I recently did a flip on this if you want to check that out. I'm not gonna flip through it every time I do a plan with me, but I am using the Erin Condren Homeschool Planner. Um, they are releasing again, this one is last year. I am curious to see if they made any changes on the new one. But Erin Condren, they released some sneak peeks of the teacher planner on their Instagram. And I have to say that vertical, the new vertical option looks amazing. I hope that they would do that for the homeschool planner because I feel like it would be such a great tool. I cannot wait to see more of that layout and the inside of that new layout and what everything looks like. Um, but I'm curious, did you guys see those pictures? Um, if you haven't, go on the Erin Condren website and look at the sneaks because, um, I don't know, I got really, really excited. And this year they're launching the homeschool planner with the teacher planner. So there's not a separate launch for that. I am an affiliate with Erin Condren, but I wasn't chosen to get a box for the homeschool planner um, and share with you guys, but I am still planning in the one that I got last year. So I have some things already kind of figured out. Um, I know that I wanna use these markers. These, let's see, the set is soft colors. Um, but I just loved, love these colors. And I recently, in another plan video, um, kind of wrote with a little bit of them just to test out the colors. Um, and I really like them. Okay, I'm going to set up my monthly view. This is the focus, so monthly focus, enrichment classes, field trips, supplies and resources needed. I like to cover up these topics because I change them. I don't need like a whole box for field trips or enrichment classes and I'm not buying supplies every month. So I don't need that portion. Um, and then for the monthly, I am probably going to use these date flags from Coco Daisy because they seem like they will go the best with this kit. So what I have chosen here, let me show you. I'm gonna be using Hand Can Plan. And here's that decor and then the journaling kit or the journaling page. So these are the colors and this is what I'm working with. I feel like it, I love flowers and floral and all of that for May. Um, even this May would probably go. So I am going to work on getting the stickers down and trying to like figure out what's going on and then I'll come back here and plan my week, the upcoming week, with all of my kids and their schoolwork and what's going on.
All right, how cute is this kit? I mean, it looks perfect on these pages. What I did is I pretty much covered everything that is originally on these pages with hand can plan stickers. And my thought here is just to have a space to just jot down anything. I'm going to do like um, a routine in this one and then I can have like important details. I don't know, I'm gonna try to fill that in and figure out how I want this to look. And then on my next homeschool plan with me, it should be completed and you guys could see what I did and how I used it. Um, another spread that I absolutely love. I mean, look at this. I love it. The colors, the flowers, the, um, I don't know. It's just, it's not overloaded with things like, um, like my to do's and you know, my planner, perfect planner, my personal planner, it's just so jam packed with everything. And it's such a tiny space that it just looks overwhelming. And this to me, it just looks fresh and, um, not overwhelming. So the point of the, like this monthly spread is going to be, um, just like extra things that we're doing and like homeschool stuff. I'm not gonna put any other thing other than that. Okay, so my thought for this week, let me, I'm going to start by writing the date. So we have, we're going into April and, or we're ending in April and going into May. So actually I think I might wanna use the pink. We are going to be in April. Is it the 20? Let's see here. 29th through May 3rd. Okay, so that is the school week. Um, whoops, I just dropped all of my pens, but good thing I don't need them. I I'm going to do something a little different. And it is, I was inspired by that sneak peek of the vertical for that teacher planner. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to do everything vertically this week, which is probably going to throw me off. Um, but I'm going to see how it goes. So this first one is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Has, have you guys ever like planned your week this way on either the teacher planner or the homeschool planner? be curious and then what I'm gonna do is Saturday slash Sunday and that is in case we do school on Saturday and Sunday because sometimes you know you have to get caught up on some things um, and it's good to have a space to write that in because on the other way like with the only the five boxes so the horizontal way you don't get that many, um, you don't get a space, a space, sorry, I'm like, what am I trying to say? You don't get a space for Saturday and Sunday and I can't record anything anywhere for that. Does that make sense? So now I will probably, um, if this works out, I might utilize this layout from here on out. Okay, and then what I'll do this way is I'll have my children and then there's going to be a blank space down there on the bottom that I'll have to figure out. Um, so Monday is our CC day. So I am just going to write CC 
and then community day and where is my ruler let's see not the one I was looking for but it's right here um I'm going to just do a line then I want to continue that line and it's probably going to be a little bit crooked um here we go okay well that ran into there Next time, I'm not going to do a full line. Look at that line is so crooked. <laughs> Me, oh, I cannot do lines for some reason. In my personal planner, I tried to do lines and it was just, it was so crooked. I need to work on, I need to work on this. And you know what I actually need and what I was looking for, oh, now, I'm, now I can find it, is the ruler that Erin Condren gives you because it is long enough for these pages. Um, so next week I will be smart and use that. Okay. Now I need to think my children were being a little bit loud and distracting me and I couldn't get my thoughts, um, all out. So Tuesday is a busy day for us. I am not going to plan. So I'm having my personal planner out here in front of me so that I can see what we're doing. It wouldn't be wise for me to plan out this beautiful week without seeing what is in my personal planner. Because if there's a day that it's like nonstop, go, 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 then we're not getting school done. And I think Tuesday is a day like that. Um, let's see here. I am going to put down Saxon math for my oldest. And in this Planner Perfect journal, I have the curriculum written out of what is left and I'm marking it off as we go. I utilize this system so much. It like helps my brain actually see, okay, all of this is accomplished. This is what's left. Um, so I don't know next year moving forward what I'm going to do uh, because I like these tracker systems and I love setting up a week in my Erin Condren homeschool planner. But then during the week, I kind of have no desire to be in it. So I'm doing a new approach where I'm trying to just like set everything up and like check mark it off. Saxon, and I'm gonna put an I here because he's going to be doing an investigation. Um, so I like, I'm just gonna like start checking it all off. And then we have Saxon. So this is different because all of their items need to be listed in this small box instead of like each one used to be a subject. So I'm testing this out. We'll see if this even works. Okay, so while I have him open, we're gonna do, we do all about reading. We're in level one and he's gonna do lesson 26. And for spelling, we use Abeka, and we are only on lesson two. I am not, since he's only in first grade, I'm not moving him super quickly through these spelling lessons. I want to make sure that he's grasping the concept. Like even in lesson two, there are words in there that he hasn't learned in All About Reading. So I'm kind of halted but I am taking words from the all about reading sheets and having him spell those. So it doesn't look like we're making progress on spelling lesson wise, but I am having him spell when I'm doing all about reading and picking out words from there. Um, <clears throat> so that's actually all that he does. He does handwriting. And then 
He sits in on history and science and Bible for morning time. Oh, that's what I could have done. Okay. Um, so next week, I'm going to move all the kids down and have the first line be our morning time, gathering time, because that is when we do our Bible, history, and science, and I need a spot to write all of that out. And I don't want it here on the bottom. Okay, morning time. Because it's our first thing that we're doing. Okay, sorry. I had a tickle in my throat and it was going to cause me to start coughing. Um, okay, so he has math. Um, spelling. Cursive and his main thing that I want him to focus on this whole week is the faces of history paper for essentials in classical conversations. He needs to button up his um, paper so that he can present it on May 6th. So this is definitely important. Um, and then we have, so I am using my father's world for kindergarten. It's my absolute favorite curriculum for kindergarten. It is so sweet and so gentle. Um, but we are definitely, definitely taking our time on this day two. Um, just because she so she's five and my other kids who did my father's world, <clears throat> they were five, but turned six quickly after the year started. She turned five right as the year started. So now we're kind of kicking it into gear. We're going to work through the summer uh, to finish that curriculum and then start her in first grade in the fall. So, um, that's the plan right now. I just feel like just watching her and, you know, she's super smart and willing to do this, but when reading, when it comes to that portion, she's really slow going through that. Um, I think it overwhelms her, but then she ends up getting it. So now I am seeing that she has matured a little bit towards the end of this year and she's ready for me to just like pick up the pace and start going. And then she is also doing Saxon. She's in Saxon one. She just started that and she is on lesson five. So um, my first grader actually could probably move to Saxon two, but I have him in one still and he's going to work through that as far as he can go. And then after, after summer, we'll start him on two. Um, all right. So this isn't going to be too hard for me. So on Tuesday, I'll just work with them in the morning and then these two can work on their own. So actually Monday is the last day of CC. And so my oldest will not have challenge A anymore. So we're going to have to try to come up with not more for him to do, but he's just going to finish his math. He's going to finish his spelling and his cursive. And then over summer, he's going to do his Latin so that when he starts challenge B, he could participate because we stopped doing Latin. It was too overwhelming. So I feel like having the summer to kind of um, learn the vocab and the declensions and all of that, it's going to be helpful. Okay, I don't know why I put this away. Okay, lesson 80. And it's going to look like this all week pretty much. I'm looking here yeah so and also what my oldest is going to do is there were a few papers that he didn't get to write this year and he is going to go back and 
complete those over the summer. And his summer, I mean, his summer starts for CC on April 29th. Um, so he's just gonna work, like continue working. And then when he's done with those papers and his math, then he can stop and he can have his summer. So that is the plan that we are kind of sticking to right now. Um, what I need to do though, oops, I went down a line there. Okay, so what I need to do is pick out more books for him to read so that he's not bored and then um, also go to their desks and and look at, sorry, the lessons that they're on for spelling and, there we go, um, cursive. And then I will write the lesson number in on there. So now for, let's see here. So after an investigation, there is a test. Then after, so it seems kind of like I am writing things out, like sax and math, sax and math, you know, when I could just do math, um, but my brain sees this and I like how it looks, so I keep doing it. Um, so once they, for spelling, when they're on a lesson and for the week, they are on that lesson the whole week. And how I have it set up is, um, they're like days. So on the first day you do you write out your spelling words three times and then do the number one section. Then the next day, write out your spelling words three times, do the second section. Write out your spelling words three times, do the third and fourth section. And then this one is test day. So you do the last section and then I test you on your, um, your words to make sure that you are spelling them and like remembering how to spell them. Aces of history, okay, that's like major, major, major important for each day. And this requires me too, because he can't do it on his own own. I need to help him get that paper, um, you know, like add in the dress ups. Okay, so we have Saxon math. 64. And with Saxon math level one through three, it doesn't get all funky with investigations and tests and stuff. It's just the next lesson. So I don't have to look up if it's a test or not. Okay. Um, and then all about reading. I'm going to put 26 here again. And then we're going to lesson 27, and I'm gonna give him another day to do lesson 27. And if he goes through and zips through it quicker, great. I will just change the lesson number. Okay, so he's doing the same thing for spelling, where it is the same lesson all week, he is just completing the each section and writing his words, except he only writes them once. Lesson two, and I'm gonna write test real small right there. Handwriting. I need to get his books kind of laid out as well because he has some readers that he can read and it will strengthen his reading ability. 
Okay, so my father's world, day three, and then day four. It's kind of funny writing this way. My brain is not, <laughs> I, I had a moment where I was like, ah, oh, what am I doing? Okay, Saxon lesson six. And seven. Okay, lesson eight. And Saturday and Sunday. You know what I could do? Is I could put all of the extra things that we're doing. So, uh, let's see. Tuesday, Wednesday. So, Tuesday, he has speech therapy. And then on Thursday, he has tutoring. Um, Wednesday, piano. So I'm just trying to like think of all of the extra curricular things that they have going on. And I'm not gonna put baseball here. Um, I mean, I could, I don't think I need to though because that's in my personal planner and that doesn't have to be on there. So I am going to write over here. I know that you can't really see because this planner is so huge. Let's see if you can see now. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go main focus this week. Faces of history. Okay. All right, I think, oh, morning time. Let me, you know, I have a printout downstairs that I need to grab. I'll be right Last back. Last week I typed out lessons and the science, history, and Bible that I want to complete by June 3rd through the 7th and since we were sick last week I got a little bit behind so what I was doing is just marking off what we did so I'm gonna have to push these down and do you guys remember homeschool planet I think that's what it was called it's a online homeschool planner and you type in things but it calculates everything for you and if you miss a lesson you just hit like, you know, missed or whatever, and it pops it to the next day. Um, that was super helpful when you went to print things out. But then I was like, well, I really am a paper planner. So I stopped using homeschool planet, planet. So every once in a while, I have to sit down on a computer and type everything out so that my brain can see it all together. Um, Okay, so on Tuesday, we are going to do Stories of America for History, and that's going to be Chapter 12. We are going to do Lesson 93, um, and that is in the Simply Charlotte Mason book. So what I decided to do was pull out all of the stories of America and stories of our nations and type those out, but then pull out the revelation part of it because I knew that we weren't going to finish all of that curriculum, but I wanted to finish the Bible portion. And so what we are doing is reading through Revelation. And so we will read through all of Revelation by the end of this school year. And my kids are super excited about that um, because they have always wanted to read through that book with me. Okay, and then The Good and the Beautiful Science, we're doing Health in the Physical Body, lesson seven. So I'm going to shorten this to, let's see, stories of America. Well, that doesn't look right, but I know, I know what it is. Chapter 13, 
and then we have lesson 98 of Revelation and then the good and the beautiful lesson 8 okay oh you know what this was probably a mistake having all of this on a Tuesday morning I might have to do this one so this morning time is going to be at lunch. Let's do that. Okay. And then we have, so what was that, 13? Stories of America. So 14, and I'm just going to go right over here lesson 15 and then move on lesson 103 and we're not gonna do science I only need to do two lessons a week to be done with science by the end of May so that is nice. I mean, I could do another one if I wanted to push through. So we'll see how the week is going. And then we'll do lesson six of Revelation. Okay. So I think I have my week pretty planned out. It's not, you know, it's the end of the school year. We're winding down. There's not a ton to do. Um, I love how this looks. I, these are like my two favorite colors. I love them um, together. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this setup and this plan with me. I know that I love setting this up. So I'm gonna take some time and really fill in some of these pages. I know this is a lot of space and to figure out what to put here each month is so challenging. Um, that sometimes it just sits blank, but this month I really do want to try to utilize that. So this is my week planned out. I don't have anything for Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know what I could do here are audiobooks and read alouds. So that I can keep a record of that. I used to put all of those here in my planner last year and it worked out. I liked seeing that and having that there. Um, but you guys, I will see you all on my next video. Have a great school week and we'll chat soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.